What's up, Snake fans? Look who's here. It's Shayla and Logan and Aria. <laughs> and it's, it gets dark too early now here in Cape Coral, Florida. I have to use my, uh, my outdoor lights here. We're in front of my building. And we uh, are going to go in there and take a look at some snakes and some uh, lizards before we uh, close up for the day. I, I wanted to get a video in. It got a little late here. And unfortunately, at 530, it's getting dark here now. It's crazy. I guess we're we're closing in on winter. It's, uh, hey, guys. Hey, there's Logan Palumbo. All right. Everyone's riding bikes. They got to go and take showers. We're going to eat dinner. But uh, not before we check out what's going on inside the snake facility. All right. Back in the albino water monitor's cage. And we're going to try to do a little positive type of interaction here. I, I think I got to get rid of that little space in the back where this guy likes to hide. Because they hide back there and then I don't get to, you know... They stay out of my my sphere. It's like they're avoiding me. According to the uh, Kevin McCurley method, you want to get them to not have hiding spots so they want to socially interact with you. So I'm going to reach in there really gently with my hand and try to make a little positive interaction with this guy. He seems to be okay with. I'm going to back out now. I'm going to give him a break and I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to show you how I'm setting up this cage. So I have this four foot vision cage. It's one of the bigger ones, the higher ones. I have, um, I built up these, put these paver blocks here that I have left over from my house so that you can get closer to this dome, which is where my ceramic heat emitter is, is sending out heat. Otherwise, if it's too low, he can't get warm enough by laying on this. And this We'll absorb that heat and warm up. So this is nice and warm to the touch, about 110 degrees. I just put a really big um, water tray in there so he can go in there and kind of soak, which he does. And they, they do all their poops right in, in the in the, either there or they'll go in this little mini water bowl I gave him. So they can basically drink from both. So if he poops in one, he has the other one. But I always find in the morning that this poops in both of them. So they, they like to go to the bathroom in these water bowls. That's just what they do, which makes it easier because I never have to really, I never have to change the uh, coconut husk in there. And you just want to make sure that they can kind of get in and out of that tub so you don't want it to be too tall. So, but these guys are getting big now, so they can definitely handle it. And this is his setup, and he's going to stay like this for quite a while until I can get him socialized. I'm not going to put him, because once you put him in a really big enclosure, they completely lose that connection with you. Now, once I can bond with this, with this guy and his sister, or, or I don't know if it's a sister, or it's just his uh, female companion, <laughs> hopefully I have a pair, then it's a different story. So, all right, let's zoom in on him a little bit here so you guys can get a good look at him. And I'm going to go in there with my hand again and try to have another little positive, little thread with him. Rub his chin. Very good, positive little interaction I had with him. He's not scared. And I'm going to leave him alone. I'm going to try to see if we can find his girlfriend now and see if she she's a little less social than he is. Although he's been whipping Pablo and I with his tail uh, the last two weeks. So I, I don't know if he's going through his rebellious teens yet, but it's possible. All right. Now here's the other cage with a, what I believe is the female. I'm not sure. And she's hiding behind the water tub, of course, because that's what they like to do. They like to hide. You know, I don't really have a lot of hiding spots, although I do have, they can go behind the pavers like the, uh, the other one could. And that's not necessarily a great thing, but it looks as they're going to hide if they finally want to hide. So I'm going to go in here and see if I can have a little positive interaction with her as well. Give her a little rub under the chin. And she's not she's not bolting, so that's a good sign, I guess. And that's a nice little positive thread we just had over there. You know, I think most people would say, hey, let's move the water bowl. Once you do that, she's gonna scramble, I guarantee it. So 
I'm letting her decide on her terms how she wants to interact with me or not interact with me. This way she knows I'm not trying to threaten her in any way and the fact that she didn't move or bolt is probably a good sign. She, I think she's starting to get used to me and Pablo coming in here, changing her water every day, giving her food a couple days a week. And at some point, hopefully, they'll say, hey, you know, those guys are good guys. If I want to come out of the cage, I'm going to have to treat them nicely. And that's, uh, that's the goal. You talk about an enthusiastic male, Boa. Is he really loving his job? <laughs> I don't even think, I don't even know if they're really even locked right now, but <laughs> the male is completely wrapped around this female's tail like, don't go, don't leave me, I gotta get every part of you. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like I said, they may not even be locked, but I thought that was pretty funny. This should be the picture of the week, you know. Um, Hey, it's always good to have a good, if I'm going to, obviously if I, if I want to find a, a male that's enthusiastic about breeding, this, this one's definitely the one to, to pick for sure. How cute are these guys? Come on. Love is in the air in the bower room today. <laughs> I don't know if we have too many locks, but we definitely have some love here going on. These guys love each other. <laughs> that's all I can ask for, right? Doing something right. Here's a female that we we tried to breed last year. I think she was a little too young. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some action this year. This is a black pastel hurricane, 100% hep hide. So this is an interesting breeding, right? So we got the black pastel plus the hurricane. I think I think we're going to try to prove it out. Obviously, it looks that way to me. It looks it's definitely more than just black pastel. She's 100% hep hide. She just shed two. And we're breeding her to a black pastel pie. So we can make some panda pies. We can make some hurricane black pastel pies. We can make some hurricane super black pastel pies, which would be hurricane panda pies. I don't even know what they would look like, to be honest with you. So we're trying. We're trying. Hopefully, she'll go this year. This is my GHI Mojave Hep Hide. And I thought she was gonna go this past year, she didn't. We're breeding it to a banana, Enchi Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pied. And we'll continue to breed them. Hopefully we'll get some eggs from her. She might produce early, or you know, early 2023 if, if it took. I've seen locks from this on this girl. And I think she's still eating. Yeah, she's still eating. So she might have just missed giving up, you know, 2022, and she's going to go in 23. Hopefully, she'll go early in the year. We'll continue to breed her, and hopefully, produce some really nice GHI Mojave banana and she orange dream bites. <laughs> Say that a hundred thousand times fast. It's a little update on my ivory blue tongue skink. One of my favorite. Uh, new animals here at the facility and this little i don't know if it's a girl or a boy but what a cutie right <laughs> my kids love this you know i got bit not hard by this this little guy but he she whatever it is was in shed so ever since she shed uh, she's been great she's been awesome i can do anything she doesn't it doesn't bite i think she was just scared She's a really, really got a good personality. Look at that tongue. Look at that blue tongue. How cool is that? Even, even at, even in ivory, which is a recessive trait, you th and it looks white. This this animal it still has the blue tongue. It's got a little bit of pink in it. It's not quite as dark as a, as, a, as a normal. I'd love to get another one of these. They're really expensive though, <laughs> and I'd rather buy, I'd rather buy other stuff. <laughs> But I really like this. Just as a pet, I love these. I'd love to be able to breed them, but look at that guy. How cute is this? I wish they stayed this size. <laughs> they, although they don't really get too much bigger. They, I mean, they might double in size, but they're really easy to keep, these guys. They don't eat that. Well, the babies eat a little bit more, maybe twice a week. 
the, the adults eat once a week. I give them a little wet food, and keep some dry food in there in case they're hungry. They really don't eat a lot. It's crazy. They're just not really display animals, but they're just, they're cool to take out. If, if I was a kid, like if I was one of my kids, I would, I would never, I'd have these things in my hands all the time. They're so, they're so just like wacky looking, right? They get the little short legs, cool body. Look at this guy. He's like almost completely white. He's really, really nice looking. I almost like these better than the albinos, to be honest with you. I just always wanted a white blue tongue. And that's what I was trying to breed for. You know, I was trying to make snows. Fortunately, I can't get mine to breed. But then again, it'd probably be a good idea to start wintering mine, <laughs> which I haven't done yet either. So, look at these guys. How cool. What a cutie. All right. I'm, just, I'm acting a little too cute for my own good right now. All right. I wanted to show you this really cool, cool female with one of my originals from 2014. This is an Enchi Butter female. She's gorgeous. Uh, I've always wanted an Enchi uh, ball python. This was back in 14, and they were kind of really kind of the thing to get. And I bought her, and I'm breeding her to an Ivory Ultra Male. So an Ivory is a super yellow belly Logan. I got my son here. What's up, Log? Home from school. Very nice yeah. yellow shirt on. And this is our, and we're breeding her to an, anyway, to an ivory ultra male. So we're going to get yellow, everything's going to be yellow belly, enchi butter, and then everything will be head ultra male. So my son's like, get me the rhino rat snake. I want the rhino rat snake. That's what he wants. He's not interested in the enchi butter. Female that's huge. I think she's going to drop a clutch of eggs any day now. So we'll she's keep it on there. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. All right. Logan's got his favorite snake, the rhino rat. Who hasn't turned blue yet? He's still green, but he's got he's getting some blue scales in him, Logan. Right? He's yeah. starting. He definitely looks more than just green now. He's definitely got some blue speckling coming in there. Oh, he's coming back to camera. It's it's amazing. Don't you think, Logan, that it's taking so long to turn blue? Yeah. It's First he turned green, and then now he's turning blue. Can you see blue on the bottom of my? He's eyes? over a year old too. He's. Yeah, he's probably never gonna turn blue. He's gonna turn. He better turn blue. <laughs> he's. <laughs> yeah, he's a blue rhino rat snake. They, pr they probably, they probably call the rhino rat snake because it's a rhino, <laughs> or they're just a rat snake because it has the horn on this. The rhino is the horn. Yeah, that's what they, they call it. That. All right. Well, it's likely not to call like, like um, like blue on the bottom of the black one. Well, I, it's just some. From what I understand, because I'm not an expert in, in rhino rat snakes, these blue ones will take. A little longer to turn blue. They sometimes can take three to four years to turn blue completely. Yeah, it could take a long time. But that's okay. Until I grow up. We have a lot of time to right to wait. Yeah. Peace out. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Bows. Got the kids here. I want to also just point out that my friend James Minoyan sent me this insane picture of this red angel fish. Take a look at this thing. What a crazy looking angel it is. I've never when I was a kid that was like the holy grail of angel fish. I love tropical fish as much as I like all the animals in the animal kingdom. And that red angel is off the charts. One day I'll have one of those for sure. All right, guys, you know what to do now. It's that time. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. And Logan, how do we... Peace out.